Lonnie West with The Aging Engineer, and today I'd like to walk you through some EQ changes I've made to the acoustic models that I'm using with my Line 6 JTV59 and the Helix Floorboard. I use this setup exclusively for uh, acoustic duo gigs. Uh, it's an unusual choice. You walk in with this type of guitar, people are expecting you to break out Sweet Child of Mine or play some hard rock. I like it because there are some really good acoustic models on here. Uh, this is a guitar is actually very comfortable to play for a long period of time. So between having different acoustic models and also the ability to change the tuning of the guitar on the fly uh, and not have to use capos or other guitars gives me a wide variety of tones that I can use to suit the song and actually makes the duo sound a little bit more interesting over time instead of having just the same sound over and over. Uh, here's a quick sample of some of the different tones we use in our set. <laughs> So I have a wide variety of tones and tunings available to me. But after about six gigs, I started noticing a problem. And it only showed up when we added a new song. And I, it became a very apparent that I had a, a, a resonant frequency problem going on. But let me play just a little bit of the beginning and see if you hear what I heard. <laughs> not immediately obvious, but when I move from the D string to the G flat, the G flat note just booms out there. Now it becomes more apparent if I just play the notes, I'm going to go up my A string, I'm going to do an octave worth of notes, and just listen to the relative volume of the notes and you'll hear what happens. Okay, so you can see where our problem is. We start out pretty even, and then right in here, um, we started hitting some peaks, and this is my problem. So what we need to do is apply an EQ curve that's going to correct this. So what I've turned on under the view menu is the show spectral pitch display. This gives you a graph in your frequency as well as your intensity here that lines up with your waveform. So you can see that we start getting hot in this frequency range right here, centered on that. So if I look at what the frequency is here, that note, it looks to be right around 180. So we know our, our frequency is going to be 180, but how wide of a Q and how much do we need to cut it to get to where we want it to be? What I did inside of Adobe Audition is I used our effects rack. I'm gonna add in a parametric EQ filter, parametric equalizer, 
and we're going to flatten this guy out. So we know we're dealing with 180. And we know we need to cut it a certain amount. So I'm going to turn off our spectral view now. And let's take a look at the preview. So we'll turn off spectral pitch display. Now we're going to turn on preview editor. Now what preview editor does is it shows you a visual representation of whatever you've added into the effects rack. Now right now we have an EQ in the effects rack, but it's really not doing anything yet. Uh, so I see the same waveform on the bottom. So if I want to go ahead and cut this, let's drop it minus 3 dB. And we see we're, we're making a difference here. All right, we saw that, that this dropped out. And if I were to disable that, you'd see, okay, so that's, it's still quite a bit accentuated. Let's go minus six. That's better. It also seems to be squashing some other stuff. So I'm gonna take my, my cue and adjust this tighter. So this is really just a trial and error process. I'm going to, let's, let's make this Q4. We'll take this in and out. That's looking much better. Now you notice what I'm looking for is I'm adjusting the Q. I want to have this EQ only affect these accentuated notes and not really impact things further up or down. That's pretty good. Let me try, let's just go eight. Why not make this very targeted? Uh, now look at this. This is interesting. So I went to a Q of 8, which is a very, if you look at this, it's a very narrow notch that we're putting in there. But when I enable this, it's really just knocking down those ones that are highlighted. It's not really touching these low ones at all. I mean, there's some minor changes in there, but they're not much. And I don't want to totally flatten this out. Some of the resonances built into acoustic models are intentional. They're intended to mimic the body and microphone used in the model. So you don't want to kill that completely. But when I have something that is clearly, you know, dropping out, you know, six dB hotter than the other notes, I, I want to quell that as much as possible. This looks pretty good. So this gives me some settings I can go back into Helix and apply. So if I look at putting in uh, 180 Hertz minus six dB with a, a Q of eight, that should make a difference on our helix. So let's go back there and see what that looks like on our helix. So I already have an EQ in here um, that I use mainly to cut some of the highs out. Um, I find that some of the highs are too shrill uh, with the vocal. Uh, so I cut the highs out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my low EQ. So first, let's just, let's just do a little hello, Delilah, just to remember where we're at. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this guy 180. We're going to make our Q8. And we're going to take the gain minus 6 dB. Okay, so now let's see what that sounds like. Turn the EQ off now and see what that sounds like. So it didn't change the character of what's coming out all that much, but it did take out that boxy sound. Uh, even on the open chords, there was less of that lower end mud, but definitely when I'm playing hey there, Delilah, that note no longer rings out. And if I were to walk this up the scale now, you would hear a difference there too. So we definitely still have some peaks there, but it is not nearly as pronounced as it was before, and that's acceptable to me. Uh, that still gives the character of the acoustic model that we're using without squashing it too much, 
doesn't make the rest of the guitar sound artificial. We had our first gig with this, and it sounds a million times better in a live uh, environment. Uh, definitely all that boominess that we were getting on those certain notes is gone now. So now I have uh, a good sounding instrument that's very even across the, the playing range. Anyway, I hope that helps you. Have a great day.